Um, he's currently in MG2. And what he says about this game, he says, I've uh, had this game, or I've had this name before the pro player showed, but I'm an MG2 currently, and my first rank was gold number four. I have about 275 hours in this game. At this stage, I have not made huge effort to study this game, just play deathmatch and offline with bots to get basic sense of the main rifles and op, and just jumped into competitive. Now I'm seeking to put proper time into this game to improve, learn, and get better. Previously, I had experience of playing CS 1.6. Any tips for me? General map specific would be highly appreciated. So, <clears throat> obviously, not a whole lot of competitive experience, but you do pretty well. Um, 275 hours is a decent amount of hours. You're probably on par with where you should be. Um, one thing I would expect with somebody that with 275 hours would just be a little bit better crosshair control. Um, I'm assuming it has something to do with your sensitivity. We'll address that later on in this video. But to start, um, first thing I notice is you do this flash a lot on T side. You walk up apartments and then you throw this flash. Um, so you've, like I said, you've walked, you've walked the entire apartments, and then you get here and you throw this flash. So the point of walking is to surprise players, and then you throw the flash, and then you give your spot away. So this is something very common at this kind of level. I mean, even in high level CS, a lot of people don't really get the concept of if you're walking somewhere, you basically want to try and surprise people. So peeking before throwing a flash, um, or unless it's a pop flash is pretty much always what you're going to do. So like I said, you walked up, you threw the flash, and then boom, you get this guy's attention right there at, uh, he's at jungle. And uh, now the sight, the player, the sight and player, player in sight is now staring straight at you. Your teammate's walking out of a ramp. He's got his attention now. Um, I think he gets the kill. Let's uh, speed this up a little bit. Yeah, so he comes out. He gets the trait, he gets the kill, and then that was probably a good like two seconds right there between him killing your teammate and then you peeking out. Obviously, this guy at jungle misses, and then the guy in sight still kills you. So, one of your main goals in Counter Strike is to trade kills. Um, if your teammate runs out and dies, you it's per, you know it's it's just the unwritten rules of CS. You just kind of it's not something you have to do, but if you want to increase your chances of winning, getting that trade frag is going to increase your chances of winning the round. So waiting the two seconds for him to readjust his aim and stare at where you're going to come out of is going to decrease your chances of winning that round. So basically when your teammate ran out and he died, it kind of forces you to peek and it may suck, but it's just kind of what you have to do if you want to win. So he peeked, he died. As soon as that dude started shooting at your teammate and you see him die, you need to peek out immediately and try and get that trade frag. Um, and it's it gave that guy a sight it gave the guy in sight a lot of time to adjust his aim and got a free two kill uh, on you guys and pretty much ensured this the the round um, in the CT's favor so next time try and get that trade frag try and peek a little earlier um, it may suck that you have to peek but it's just kind of something you have to do if you want to win all right now here you are um, obviously you guys lost the last round and you're kind of just lurking a ramp. You're kind of, your teammates are kind of doing something in mid. This is good. Um, I don't fully advise throwing that smoke, especially uh, later in the round like that, because uh, that's going to give them the clue that you're there. And you, like I said earlier, you're walking to a place, um, kind of lurking. You kind of don't want to be known, but throwing the smoke obviously gives away your position. Um, but it was good. It got you out of a ramp, and then it gets you into this close fight with this player and connector, with, and you have a pistol. Um, he does a bit of damage on you. You've got five HP left. Um, you guys are in a four on three situation. Um, your teammates, I think, end up dying elsewhere on the map. Um, but this is where a, a small mistake is made. So, bomb is planted at a site. You know they're going to have to come through connector or jungle. And for some reason, you know this guy's here. Or he knows you're here, or whatever. Um, it's it. When you're when you're low on HP, you always want to use cover to your advantage. And this spot right here, obviously, you're in basically like a closet. You have little to no cover here. Cover meaning somewhere to run if you don't get the kill or whatever. Um, obviously, he throws like a really basic flash. You're unflashed, and he just gets the jump on you because you're just sitting in a bad spot where you have don't have cover, and you didn't react quickly enough to get the kill. Not even sure if you would have got the kill because if you weren't going to headshot him immediately... Um, He's going to get that pistol off on you. So with low HP, I wouldn't have taken that gunfight. I would have just went somewhere where you know that it's clear, like meaning 
there's not going to be a bad guy there, and or go next to a teammate where you guys can set up a trade frag. Either they're gonna you're gonna bait for them, meaning you're gonna go and die, and then your teammate can get to trade frag, or you're just gonna stay alive um, and not take that gunfight. So trying to keep your situational awareness like at at the front of your mind, like at all times. Um, you know, CS is all about situational awareness, and you got to just kind of keep that it you know the forefront of your mind when you're putting yourself into these gunfights all right and here we are on the next round um, you guys won the previous round this is something i've noticed throughout your demo a lot um, it's just kind of something you expect with somebody with 275 hours is your crosshair placement so crosshair placement aim map positioning they all go hand in hand so if you have good map positioning and you have it will allow you to have good crosshair placement and in turn you will have better aim because your crosshair placement is going to be where the bad guys are um and you kind of just you're kind of your crosshair is just kind of in no man's land right here so you kind of peek up connector you saw that guy for about a half a second and your crosshair is just staring at the wall so if you watch any pro player you'll see when they come up these stairs that a crosshair is locked on that little cubby or at the bottom of the stairs um or you just go quickly past that spot right there. Generally speaking, it's a, some, it's a place that you're going to pre-aim um, or have good crosshair placement with because it's a very common spot for a CT to be. So he gets a few shots off and he stays there and then he dinks you and hits you through the wall for 50 damage and you get the you get the kill. So you, you definitely should have died there. Um, he shot you through the wall and it saved your life basically. Um, like I said, it's just it, it's something you you're gonna need to work on. Um, death matching helps a lot with this uh, crosshair placement. You're basically you never want to have your crosshair in no man's land. No man's land meaning where there's not going to be a bad guy. You always want your crosshair where there's going to be a bad guy. Um, so like I said, when you were coming up those stairs and your crosshair was just looking at the wall, there was like a zero percent chance that there was gonna be a bad guy there. So keep that in mind you always want to have your crosshair at head level you always want to have your crosshair where the bad guy is going to be like this right here you you have an idea that the guy could be there um and you do it sometimes and you don't do it sometimes but you just always want your crosshair where the bad guy can be okay now you guys won the previous round you guys are on another gun round here um this is a this is a a pretty it's a it's a pretty big mistake uh it's totally avoidable um, you're kind of just walk pushing apartments. Your teammates are doing something at A. You can see they're pretty close to the site. There's a dude at ramp, some guys mid or whatever. Um, and he just drops the smoke. Now, I'm not, I'm not really sure what your intention was. I, I figured you would be in the kind of lurk position. Your teammate gets a pick at A. And you kind of just walk through the smoke and he gets a free frag on you. There's pretty much no reason to do that. Um, it was just a small decision or a small bad decision that you made, um, but your teammates were pretty close to hitting the site. They got a kill. You simply staying alive and just lurking on them and potentially making a huge flank on them at B um, could have potentially won you the round. Obviously, you guys are now in a four-on-one situation, but that dude was going to push through that smoke. You pretty much never want to push through a smoke because there's always going to be somebody looking at that smoke, and you have a disadvantage walking through the smoke. Them looking at the smoke, they see you coming out first before you see them. It's not a, it's not an even timed thing. So, pretty much never push through smokes unless you're going to drop a flash on the other side of it and run through it. Or part of your strategy is like for four people to just bum rush it through a smoke and surprise the people on the other side of it. All right, so you guys decide to rush B here. Um, this is a this is kind of something I just mentioned on the last video or the last part the last thing i just recorded you people they drop the smoke and you guys just bum rush through it this is pretty much what you have to do on eco rounds you have to bum rush surprise all those players get the plant down and then running to basically the choke points of the map so people going into window room you go into cat um this is a really good play you end up getting the burst glock on this dude here with the scout uh he obviously doesn't have head armor as you get a one shot glock kill on him um your teammates obviously aren't trade aren't setting up for trades as they pretty much all die um you get the you get the glock headshot there get the, they get the kill on the last player there and then now you're in a 1v1 you you can see on your radar that the bomb is not planted obviously in the best spot I'm not sure how the communication is going on in the game if they're telling you that it's not planted for you but regardless you were just simply too far away as soon as you saw that dude in sight and you missed that shot you you needed to run to the position that you're at right now um 
you have to know the diffuse times. It takes seven seconds to diffuse the bomb. You need it to be in a spot where you can basically be at to check to see if he's diffusing the bomb to see if he's going to fake it. And he just locks it and gets the kill because you were just simply too far away. So like I said, as soon as you saw the dude in sight, you needed to run to cat. Um, that little spot right there behind the pillar, you have all kinds of cover there. Um, it would have just been the best play for you. All right, so you guys get yourselves into a three-on-two situation here. You're kind of just lurking as your teammate comes back to the A bomb site. Um, you do a real good, real good job here of just staying quiet and surprising these players here. Um, now you guys are in a two-on-two -two situation. You know the site's clear because you came through halls. There can be a player in CT spawn and there can be a player in mid. Obviously, he's just rotating through. Um, window now but I was just saying theoretically they could have been in those two spots you smoke off the dude connector you get the early frag on the guy here in jungle so now they know where you're at um, you know just staying quiet walking obviously made a little noise there staying quiet walking is gonna put your put you in the best position to win the round um, your teammate obviously spots him here in like a second um, this is something I notice that you do a lot or you've done a lot um, I'm going to address this later on in the video, uh, but this is going to be a great example of, like I, th I think I mentioned it in the first um, first part of the video where you you lose control of your crosshair, um, and I'm going to talk about that later in the video. But there was a, that right there was another great example of just not having good control of it. Looks like your sensitivity is a little high. Um, but what I wanted to talk about that scenario there is it was just you were shooting too quickly. So... There's, there's something you'll need to learn about the guns and about Counter-Strike in general is you burst fire, then you have to wait for the recoil to reset, and then you'll burst fire again. If you burst fire too quickly or you shoot too quickly, your bullets were basically hitting the ground in the skybox um, or the ceiling because you were shooting too quickly. Uh, I'm gonna, Like I said, I'm going to address the aiming part of that at the end of this video, but that right there was a perfect example of it, and it happens again in a few more rounds from now where you're at A ramp on CT side, um, and you're shooting at these guys, and you just can't control the recoil. So um, that's something you can learn in deathmatching, but like I said, I'm going to address that late, later in the video, and I just wanted to point it out in a real in-game situation where it could have got you killed. All right, and here you are at phone booth and CT side, and this is pistol round. So they've got a good smoke on the A side, good smoke on the stairs. Um, there's like a 190% chance that there's gonna be somebody at CT spawn on Mirage on pistol round. It's just, there's, it, it, you're, you're, they know that you're going to be there. There's a 100% chance that you're gonna be there. So you jumping on top of that box right there, taking 40 damage. Um, you basically put yourself into a sitting duck. A lot of a lot of players in Counter Strike don't understand the concept of using cover to their advantage. Um, that smoke provided you a whole lot of cover, actually, because um, they didn't smoke off spawn; they smoked off in front of spawn. So you could have just used that smoke to your advantage, peeked out around it, and been shooting them the entire time. Um, but instead, you played back in CT spawn, and they get you down to eight HP. You guys end up winning this round anyway, but basically. I'm going to give you a little situational um, tip. Using that smoke, so obviously Counter-Strike is very situational, but using that smoke to your advantage and or just staying alive in CT spawn, ensuring that the terrorists don't push into CT spawn and killing them if they do push you is much more beneficial to you and your team um, and give, increasing your chances of winning that match just by you staying alive and or just making sure that they don't push CT spawn and keeping all of your HP and waiting for your teammates to retake would have been a better play in that situation. Um, they threw that smoke there. Like I said, they knew that you're going to be there. So they know you should know that they know that you're going to be there. You're not surprising anybody, but just playing the numbers and waiting for your teammate to retake um, would have increased your chances of winning the round. Obviously, you did win that round, but you almost did die. So keep that in mind next time. All right, and this is the next thing. So a little bit of a economy, Counter-Strike economy lesson here. So you guys won the previous round. You had a FAMAS, and two of the players, you can see the money here, two of the players on the other team stayed alive. That means they get no money bonus. So the other team, the other players on your team have 3,400, 4,100, 3,400, 600, and 900. Those are the two players that stayed alive the previous round. They saved their guns. That means they got no money bonus. Now, there's a pretty much a 95% chance that the other team is not going to buy big guns this round because they didn't get the bomb down. 
two of the players stayed alive. That means only three of them could potentially buy. And if they do buy, they're going to be a low buy. You having a FAMIS right here. So obviously this is hindsight's 2020, but either way, you having a FAMIS here would have been totally fine. There was no need to upgrade to the gun. Obviously your teammate did go and pick it up, but it wasn't necessary. You two of your team or three of you guys have rifles and then two guys have MP5s or SMGs. Sorry, <laughs> MP5s. Um, so like I said, you guys win the round, the or the previous round. You had a FAMAS. Um, they're obviously on an eco here, and you guys end up losing this round. You save your gun, but you lose the round. So we're going to fast forward through this, and then you're going to see what happens here. So boom, 4,200, 1,200, that's your money, 2,600, 1,500, and then 9K for the other player. So theoretically speaking, if you did not buy the MP that that rifle this round, you would have had another 4,200 bucks, basically. You could have dropped a gun to the guy, how the fuck. Uh, Apex, or sorry, the dot, dot, dot dude could have dropped another gun, and the Apex dude could have bought. So you guys theoretically would have had a full buy here if you would not have bought that FAMAS. And it's just little things like that that add up through the, the course of 16 rounds or 20 rounds or however long a match is that really affect the outcome of a match. And you guys not having a buy here, you guys end up tying this match. If you guys would have had guns here, that would have increased your chances of winning this round and winning the whole entire match um, if you wouldn't have bought that rifle on the round when you had the FAMAS. So... Counter Strike is a bunch of is a is Counter Strike is about minimizing mistakes, and oh, there's a whole bunch of little things that happen in a match that if you do right, are going to increase your chances of winning the match or in winning the rounds, whatever. And having the the right knowledge about the economy would have been great for you in this situation. All right, and we're back. So this is something you've been doing a few times. Um, you throw an early smoke at Balkan. You do it a few rounds after this as well. So there's 1 minute 49 seconds in the round. So 10 seconds into the round, you threw a smoke on Balcony. It's already been there for probably 4 seconds now. And by the time the players even get to Balcony, your smoke is gone. So this is a little part of Counter-Strike where you need to be utilizing your economy, or sorry, your economy, your equipment to the, your, best at, your best ability. Um, there was no reason to throw that smoke in the first four seconds of the round because there's a 0% chance that the players are going to be there. They can't even be there. Even if they rushed, that smoke would have still beat them there by a good 10 seconds, uh, probably 8 seconds. So you really have to know the the timing for that kind of stuff. There, were, You basically just wanted to wait a little bit longer um, and let that smoke go. So next thing. You throw a really good pop flash. This is a, a very commonly thrown pop flash under balcony. You throw it through the little ladder. It bounces off the wall. These guys are full white right now. Now look at your spot. You're a good like three paces too far extended. You've come out under balcony way too far. Um, and this is another example of not being able to control the recoil of the game. Your bolt, like six of your bullets have hit the wall there. Uh, you get the kill on that guy and the neck, this dude right here at Tetris is unflashed and gets the kill on you. So this is a little bit of positioning um, here that you need to work on. F with the, what you did is called a wide peak. You will pretty much only want a wide peak when a player is posted on you. Since you th posted on you, meaning they know where you're at and they're expecting you to peak, um, that's pretty much the only time you're going to want a wide peak like that. So you threw the pop flash. If they're there, they're going to be flashed. Um, you wide peeked, you got one kill, but the other dude was unflashed in time. And when you tried to run back under balcony, you died. So the, uh, what you want to do is to shoulder peek. You want to peek closer. You want to use the cover the cover to your advantage. So if you would have thrown that pop flash and just peeked out just enough over to the left of that box to shoot the guys at Tetris, that would have increased your chances of staying alive in that situation. Getting a 2K, um, even just getting one kill and falling back is totally fine getting that kill your teammates are going to know hey they're here they're going to rotate they're going to help you out but instead you get one kill and then die by the trade frag of the dude that gets on flash so next time you throw that flash don't peek out as wide generally speaking you just want to peek out enough to get the kill and check it and clear and see if they're there and then if not throw the same flash again when you hear them coming out and didn't do the same thing all right and here we are on another gun round you threw that real early smoke at balcony they can't even be there again um and you're going to throw the pop flash and you peek out a little closer this time and you get the kill. So now you guys are in a five on four situation. You know, there's some flashes coming over and you're 
player, yep, right there. So the player in balcony kills the player by jungle or stairs or wherever he was at. So you know that there's a guy in balcony. He has an op. He's per, he's per, he's probably not going to run away. And then you do this right here. You run. You run to your spot right there. So he he hundred percent knows that you're in that spot. Now what he's going to do is he's going to post on an angle, making sure that you don't run out of that spot. He's looking at like a you know a tighter angle from the right side of the hall to see if you leave that spot and run to stairs or you run to site or something. And then you'll see what happens here. You're you're basically pigeonholed into firebox. He's telling his teammate, "Hey, the guys, there can be one under balcony. I heard him go here, so they're going to throw this little Molotov to clear under balcony, and they know he knows that you're here, so he just peeks out and gets a free frag on you." He heard you run to that spot. You knew that he was there. You per you just can't. It's a situational thing. You can't run to that spot and just stay there if you know that he can hear you. Um, you may have thought you were a little far. You may have thought you were far enough away from him that he couldn't hear you, but he definitely could, and it got you killed. And you could have just repositioned and went under stairs or done something different, or even just just walked to that spot, and that would have increased your chances of staying alive and winning this round. All right, and here we are in another example of where your sensitivity looks really high um, and you basically just can't control the recoil or you don't control the recoil of the gun very well. Um, you're using this pop flash again. Great pop flash. You you get you catch this dude. This is, you're, you're standing there a little long for me, but you catch this dude pretty good um, and you get the kill. So you used about... 17, 18 bullets, you finally get the kill. The Anon.jpg dude comes out and gets the trade frag. So that was another example of where you're not countering the recoil very well um, in a very smooth fashion and gets you killed. And I'm not sure if it's because your sensitivity is real high, but I just want to talk about like sensitivity in general. I'm um, going to let this play out and just turn the volume down. Um, sensitivity in general... <sighs> A lot of people, you know, it sets, like I said, since, or I haven't said this yet, but sensitivity is a personal preference, but there's, um, there's a, a general rule of sensitivity. There's not a lot of pro players that play with very different sensitivities. Pretty much everybody uses something similar. Um, they use about 400 to 450, maybe 500 DPI, um, on the mouse and then anywhere between like 1.5 and then like three sensitivity, four sensitivity, some people a little bit higher, but nothing more than that. Um, and if people have like 800 DPI, then they usually have like a 1.5 or two in-game sensitivity. And it ends up basically being the same as if somebody had a 4.5 or sorry, a, a 400 to 450 DPI and then like three or 2.5 in-game sensitivity. So your scent, this is not you obviously, your sense just looks a bit high throughout the game. Um, it, it, I don't notice or I don't see your crosshair being very smooth. Everything is kind of jittery. Um, it just, you know, flails about. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say that your sensitivity is a little bit higher than it should be. And if you lowered it a bit, you would put, you would have much better chance of getting kills in situations where you need to counter the recoil because it's much easier to counter the recoil with a nice, smooth, slow sensitivity. Um, you may have a small mouse pad, whatever. Um, if you do, or if you don't, you know, cool and all but it just looks like your sensitivity is a bit high um, you know try lowering it a bit um, you know maybe post in the comments of this video what your actual sensitivity is and we can talk about it um, but that had something to do with it so the next thing is I wanted to talk about I mentioned it earlier was your general aiming um, I'm going to jump into a server now and show you a few things for countering recoil and uh, just aiming in general all right, and we're here on this map called Aimbots. Um, you can search it on Google. It's on the Steam Group community or Steam community. It's just a basic map that spawns bots, and you can control where they're at and if you want them to move and if you want head armor stuff like that. So we'll take these off. We don't have the um, we don't have an AK. So we're going to talk a little bit about the shooting. Um, and the countering the recoil in this game. So what you were doing, as you can see the bullets on the wall, you were going like this, you were bursting and then shooting again. And then you can see your bullets are not hitting the spot here. They're all up here. Um, and with the AK, it's even more dramatic. Um, from long range, you were shooting at some people under balcony and you were at jungle and you were shooting like this. So you, you can see your bullets are hitting and you were moving a little bit too. You can see your bullets are hitting here, not at head level. Um, 
So I'm going to show you a few ways to fix that or things that you can work on in Deathmatch and just in Counter-Strike in general. So w what I like to do, tell people to do is to just use a wall like this. And here's a spot that I want you to hit. I want you to shoot at this spot and just basically pull down. So your bullets are going to hit the person's head and then... Obviously, you can hit their body. If you hit them in the head, the first bullet, the second body shot, or the third body shot is going to hurt, uh, kill them. And you can do this at all different ranges. Um, it's a little hard for me to do this right now because I'm in windowed mode, so I can't really see, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it pretty well. Basically, all my bullets are within a very small congested area, and you can do this. I'm not even going to try and shoot the headshots. I'm just going to try and shoot the chest, and you can see that I'm killing them pretty quickly. Um... And this is just by pulling down and countering the recoil in the game. Um, obviously, you want to try and shoot them in the head first and, you know, pull down to increase your chances of hitting their body afterwards. So with that said, I want, you know, try You can You can even use this map. This map's a great example of it, but I'm just using this because there's a lot of players and they're very close and I can do this quickly. Um, and in, even in windowed mode, I can still shoot the headshots on them. So, um learn the recoil of the guns and learn the time between being able to shoot and then stop and shoot and start on the next player and what you want to do is um th this is something I, I i'm not sure if you know or you don't know but you'll see a lot of people shoot and then move and then shoot and move and what this does is it you're using your recoil and then you're moving and in the time that you're moving you're evading their bullets as well as giving your crosshair your or sorry the recoil time to reset and the reason you do that is you're evading their bullets you're, re you're resetting but you're also able to counter strafe so if you see what i'm doing i'm going strafing a and then i'm pressing d and i stop myself very quickly and what that does is it allows you to shoot much quicker um, because you're not moving and in, instead of doing this, instead of strafing A and then letting go, you see how the bullets are still inaccurate. But if I strafe and stop, all my bullets are accurately instantly. Um, that's something you can work on. It will definitely increase your aim and your chances of getting those kills on players much quicker. Um, so give that a shot. Work on that. Do it in deathmatch. You know, jump into a deathmatch. Get 100 kills with one gun. Then practice another gun. Um, you know, do that a few times a day. Um, I just I use the number 100 kills because I basically will look at tab and be like, oh, I went 100 kills and then 30 kills today or 30 deaths today. And today I got 100 kills and I got 10 deaths. So it's just a good way to monitor how you're how you're improving aim wise if you're able to get the kills um, on the bad guys quick enough. So hope you enjoyed this demo review. Hope you learned a lot. Hope this increases your skill in the game. And um, yeah, ho ho hope it's just does everything you need and you can submit another demo review in in a few months and we can review and analyze your gameplay then and see how you've improved um this was casey foster with netcode guides hope you guys enjoyed the demo review thanks